Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1970 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Seattle Pilots and the Cleveland Indians at Cleveland Stadium. On the mound for the Pilots today is Rod Locke, whose record is 5-3 with a 3.41 ERA. And pitching for the Indians is Sonny Siebert, whose record is 11-15 with a 5.26 ERA. Okay, we had a nice victory yesterday over the Yankees. We won 8-2. to two. Uh, We faced a, a terrible pitcher, Larry Gowell. He had, he had all the bad peripherals heading into the ballgame. And for a moment, I thought he might get over on us. But he, in the end, he ended up walking uh, 10 batters. And uh, we managed to put up eight runs off of him and the uh, reliever. And uh, it was it? I mean, that's got to be the most runs we've scored. I'm looking right now. That is the most runs we've scored all month. So, uh, yeah, our offense has been quieted. Uh, and I feel like as we head to uh, Cleveland Stadium to play the Indians, uh, who do have one of the best offenses uh, in the American League, I mean, maybe we have a shot here to keep the uh, offense hot. Um, the Indians have 180 home runs. Uh, and they're betting 254, which is above the league average. So, I mean, they've pitched well. I mean, they've hit well. Their pitching is not so good. They're right in line with us uh, as far as ERA goes. We're just a tad bit better. Uh, but in general, uh, the Indians have had a poor year. And with a loss today, uh, they will at best be able to break even. Uh, they've already been eliminated. So I don't know what they're playing for. Uh, we are trying to get... Uh, our guys, whatever stats that they can accumulate between here and the end of the year. Um, so we'll be looking forward to that today, getting maybe a couple more home runs uh, from uh, Darren Johnson or Pepitone hit one yesterday to give him 26. Uh, so, you know, we are, we are trying to rack up as many stolen bases, home runs, RBIs, as much as, much as we can um, as the season comes to a close. Now, I would like to try to do a double header today. Uh, I am, I'm keeping it open. Um, it may be very, very late on the East Coast before it pops up, but uh, it is something that I'm planning on doing. It just depends on how the rest of my night goes. So we do have Ron Locke making the start for today's ball game. He's filling in for Brubaker, who is injured for the rest of the year. Locke pitched really well in four of his five starts. Uh, when he filled in into the rotation until we got the uh, young guys up from uh, double A. And so I feel like he can give us five innings today. That's all we really need from him. In fact, three innings would be fine. We've got a deep enough bullpen that we could go um, go in there and grab some, a bunch of those guys and just put them through the, the rigors of going multiple innings. Now, uh, yesterday I announced the, uh, the third place prize for our giveaway. We're going to start taking participants uh, entries uh, very soon, like maybe within the next couple of days, maybe probably before the weekend. Uh, and I wanted to just remind everyone that the third place prize is the Aurelio Rodriguez rookie card, which is actually the Angels Bat Boy. This is the 1969 Tops card, a pretty famous card, once very collectible. Um, and uh, the front of it and the corners are in pretty good shape. Considering the age, uh, the back, I will show you here. I don't think I showed this yesterday, but we'll flip the card over if it'll cooperate. And you can see that this was, must have been in somebody's scrapbook uh, when they were a kid. You can see the little um, dots here on it. So that diminishes the overall value of this card. But as a collectible, as something to bring out at parties and show people, um, it's still a pretty good card. And now I want to show you the second place prize, which I think you're going to enjoy. I know Julio L. will like this card a lot. Uh, he is a Baltimore Orioles fan. And in 1970, Boog Powell was the American League MVP. And we have a 2012 Panini Golden Age Historic Signatures autograph of Boog Powell. A cool looking autograph. It's it's maybe not as 
uh, you know, easily defined as some other autographs you might see. Maybe Boog was, uh, you know, hurrying through these autographs, but nonetheless, a very cool autograph of the American League MVP from this very season that we're playing. Uh, so that is the second place prize. Now, the grand prize, I still don't know what it's going to be. I'm going to have to make a decision and pick something. Uh, but it will be, you know, an upgrade from a, a Boog Paul autograph. I, that much I can guarantee you. Uh, so I'm still searching for the right item. Um, and so there's your third place prize. The Aurelio Rodriguez rookie card, which was actually the bat boy for the Angels. And the second place prize will be the Boog Powell uh, 2012 Panini Golden Age Historic Signatures uh, autograph. So a really cool card. Uh, pretty pleased with that. I hope you all like it. And let's get started with today's ball game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel in order to get in on the giveaway. You must be a subscriber. So hit that subscribe button at the end of the video. Hit the like button because you're just a nice person. And we'll take a look here. Ron Block facing the Indians. He's had a little bit of success. Not a lot of plate appearances against him. And then all the bullpen is available today. That's good news. We do get the gerb back in two games. So after today's doubleheader, uh, he will be available. That's, that's good. Although Bucky Brandon pitched great yesterday. Sonny Siebert, uh, a right-hander, will get the start for... Um, the Indians, and yeah, okay, I, I just, I'm sorry, I was thinking for a moment, did I update the batting lineup, if I have, because uh, Darren Johnson was off yesterday, he is in there today, and Joe Pepitone uh, was listed as tired, and he will get the rest today. So, Steve Whitaker will get the start, spot start in right field, and uh, everybody else is in their normal position. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for today's ballgame. Batting leadoff, playing shortstop is Jerry Devanin. Batting second in left field is Jose Cruz. Batting third in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth and catching is Manny Sanguian. Batting sixth in right field is Steve Whitaker. Batting 7th at 3rd base is Aurelio Rodriguez. Batting 8th at 2nd base is Van Kelly. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Ron Locke. Okay, we'll take a look here at Sonny Siebert, represented on the Red Sox in 1970. Not having a good year, he's 11-15, making his 36th start. With a 5.26 ERA, 168 strikeouts, and 248 and a third in each pitch. Opponents are batting 266 against him. Seven complete games, no shutouts. Fastball tops out at 87 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 40%. A two pitch pitcher. His out pitch is the curveball. Secondary pitch is a fourth seam fastball. Overall rated an 80. The 33 year old right hander is a free agent at the end of the year. Looking at his log, he's coming off a complete game win over the Angels where he only gave up one run and nine hits, did not walk anybody. And if you scroll on down, you'll see that he beat us back on July 2nd, going eight innings, giving up four runs, only one was earned, and he struck out a season-high 10 batters. Ouch. Okay, we'll take a look here at the defense for the Indians, because we're starting a left-hander. They'll have a lineup in there versus lefties, so... Uh, I'm not really sure what their traditional lineup is. We don't play them often enough to know for certain, but it looks like first base, second base, and third base all below the average. Um, Spezio at third must be a September call-up. That's Ed Spezio. Well, last year he got 560 at-bats for, uh, for the Padres. This year he's got five. And, uh, yeah, behind the plate is Suarez, who has a 91 arm, a 93 overall rating. We will not be running on him. Uh, which is tough, because we are um, 
AG is in second place in stolen bases with 36. Cardinal has 41. So we almost got to take it to him here if we want to help AG get the lead so maybe, uh, in stolen bases. So maybe we'll try it. Here we go. Jerry Devanin leading it off versus Sonny Siebert. And there's a ground ball to short. Versailles makes the plate. One up. Next man up is Jose Cruz. Striking out swinging. Two quick outs for Siebert. And I'll leave it up to Tommy Agee to get something going here. Strike it out. Wow. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at this Indians lineup. Batting lead off. In right field is Ted Ford. Batting second in center field is Jose Cardinal. Batting third at second base is Billy Parker. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Norm Cash. Batting fifth in left field is John Lowenstein. Batting sixth at third base is Ed Spezio. Batting seventh in catching is Ken Suarez. Batting eighth is the shortstop, Zoilo Versales. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Sonny Siebert. Okay, we'll take a quick look here at Ron Locke. He is making his sixth start. Five and three with a 341 ERA. More walks and strikeouts. Uh, he's got 40 strikeouts and 71 in the third innings pitch. The opponents are betting 206. Against him, his fastball tops out at 88 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 49.3%. The fastball is the only good pitch he has left. Rated an 81. Overall rated an 80. One of the few players on the team that's at least considered league average. Overall, the 28-year-old left-hander is making uh, 15,000 and goes to arbitration next year. Let's look at his log. Here's his five starts. He took a loss against the Angels where he gave up five, but otherwise, he did exactly what we needed him to do, and that's eat up a few innings. In his last relief appearance, he gave up four runs and he still managed to get the win. So we're not holding that against him. Let's take a look at our defense. Solid everywhere you look. Infield um, with Devanin at short, right at league average. Outfield is strong. And behind the plate is Manny Sanguian. Having a good year for us. He's going to be ready with Cardinal batting second today. Here's uh, Ted Ford leading it off against Ron Locke. And he pulls it into left field for a hit. So Ford on first. What? Just, he is not, does not have a stolen base all year, so we'll see if he's going to go. Cardinal leading the American League with 41 stolen bases. Ground ball to third. And a double play with all that speed. Nicely done by Aurelio. Two down for Billy Parker. Parker was last year's rookie of the year, was he not? No, he was the, uh, an all-star this year. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Here we go. 2-2 two, two count, and Locke strikes him out. That's a good start to the ballgame for Locke. We go to the top of the second, and Darren Johnson will lead it off, followed by St. Ian and Whitaker. Johnson lining it out to second. One out. Here's Manny Sanguian. Sanguian's been on a roll. He's had back-to-back three-hit games, and he gets a hit in his first plate appearance here today. So we got Sanguian on first. Steve Whitaker, two for nine on the season. He's came, uh, come into a lot of ball games as a defensive replacement. There's a ground ball to first. Norm Cash cannot make the play to second, so he steps on the bag. For out number two, we've got a runner in scoring position for Aurelio. Feels like it's been forever since he's done anything offensively. And there's a base hit to right. Can Seguin score on that? He does! An RBI single for Aurelio. And it's 1-0 Seattle. Okay, looking good as we jump ahead. Van Kelly. Routine ground ball to short. And that will be it. Okay, Seattle, 1-0 lead, and Norm Cash is up. Cash is crushing it here down the stretch. 
batting 330 over the last 20 games with five home runs and 24 RBI. Cash will fly out to right center field. One down, lefty on lefty, and Lowenstein strikes out. He might be the rookie of the year. That's his 101st strikeout. Try to create a special card for uh, rookie stars, which is what uh, the 1971 set actually had as a Specio flies out to right. So it'd be a card that would have like Cruz, Lowenstein, I'm not sure who else, but you know, like I, I'm, I'm trying to make that work. It's a little bit tougher than uh, just making the, the 1971 card look right. Locke flying out to center. That was quite a jolt he put into it. One out, and Jerry Devannon drops it into right center field for a single. Do we want to go for two? We do not. Devannon at first, and his speed ratings dropped a point. Let's let Jose Cruz swing away. Uh, he has been crushing it uh, lately, but also he's got four home runs in the last 20 games. Uh, so his power's picked up. So I feel like hitting and running with him was kind of a waste. I almost want him to just take cuts. There we go, Bates. Hit into left field. Devan in. Wisely holds it second. First and second. One down for Tommy Ag. Anybody else behind the plate? And I might do a double steal here. Ag popping it up into foul ground. Two down, and here's Darren Johnson in the top 10 with an RBI with 85. Let's see if he can add to that total. 2-2 two -two count. Oh, yes, he does. A three-run home run. His 31st homer of the season. It's 4-0 Seattle. Nice. That'll give him 88. He might get to 100 with a little bit of luck. Especially if the home runs are coming. Great job. I want it to be easy like this. Hey, another multi-hit game for Manny. He's dropping the same guillotine. It's eight hits in three ball games. Oh boy, Whitaker with the ground ball. And there's your double play. Oh, there's already two outs, my bad. Okay, four nothing. Seattle. Lock looking solid so far as Ken Suarez steps in. That's a ground ball to Kelly. Easy play, one out. Zoilo Versales. Popping it up. One-time MVP for the Twins. That was 1965, I believe. And then Sonny Siebert popping it out. Shallow right field. Looks like Kelly goes back and makes the catch. We are going to the top of the fourth inning. And Aurelio Rodriguez will lead off. Rodriguez pops it up to third. Play made by Spezio. Um, Ed Spezio's son played for the Angels, right? What's his name? It wasn't Ed also. Scott. Scott Spezio, right? And I think he played for... I think he came up in the A's organization. Well, there's a one, two, three inning for Sonny Siebert. That's the type of inning Siebert needed to stay in this ballgame, I think. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Now, Locke has already given us three. He's faced the minimum. Uh, I think he's earned the right to go one more. There's a full count to Ford. Yeah, this is this is where things get shaky in the ball game, right? The fourth inning with these spot starters, they tend to give some of the runs right back. Ground ball to first. Can we get a double play? Get greedy. Oh yes, we do. Still face the minimum. All right. Well, 
Locke has earned the right to go another bet. Oh, crap. Billy Parker with his 26th home run. I don't know who this guy is or where he came from. But he's got some heavy lifting going on. And then lefty, lefty. No cash flies out. Okay, so Locke gives up a run. No big deal. We go to the top of the fifth. And here is Jerry Devanna leading off. Striking out. Three Ks for Siebert. One down for Jose Cruz. And he pounds it into the dirt in front of home plate. And an error on Suarez. Uh, all right. Um... Let's just let A.G. swing away. Oh, he got all that one. A two-run shot to left. That is a... Like a worm burner. It was so low. Barely cleared the fence. And it's 6-1. to one, 14th home run by Tommy A.G. He's hit less home runs this year, but he's hit eight more doubles. And his batting average is higher. So, And his strikeouts are... Are lower and was walks are up so I mean I, I mean this has been a step in the right direction as far as that trade goes it's worked out okay Darren Johnson will not be outdone it's a double dong day for Darren Johnson back-to-back -back dongs and another three-run inning it's seven to one Sonny Siebert they're keeping him in the ball game. He's given up three home runs in less than five innings. And a third hit from St. Gian. What is going on? Hell yeah, we'll give him a... Oh, no, it's only 30%. No, we're not going to do that. All right. Three singles for St. Gian. It's either a single or it's clear in the fence. Here's Steve Whitaker. High fly of all the right. I do like these games when I feel comfortable with our lead. But a win will push us a little bit further from the number one pick, perhaps. Oh, there's a base hit down the left field line. Rodriguez, a double. That is his 14th double this year. Second and third with two outs and Van Kelly at the plate. Kelly's a good RBI guy in these situations. And the ground ball gets through. Can Rodriguez score from second? No, we hold him up. An RBI single for Van Kelly, and it's 8-1. to one. 11 hits for the Pilots. And we're definitely going to let Ron Locke back. I mean, he's, we'll give him five innings. Get himself a well-deserved win. All right, so we score four. It's eight to one. Locke will face a left-hander and then Spezio and Suarez. And then um, we'll call it a day for him. Lowenstein with a ground ball to second. One out. Wow, the catcher. Oh no, that's Spezio when it went deep. How much power does he have? Oh, he's got a lot of power. That's his first home run of the year. After 12 last year. And it's 8-2. to two. Okay, good job by Locke jamming Suarez inside. Two down. Ron Locke's at 60 pitches. That's about as much as he can go. Rosales flies out to left. Okay, a great job by Ron Locke. Gave up three hits, two home runs. He leaves with the 8-2 to two lead. We go to the top of the six. We'll take a look at the in-game stats. A lot to see today. Three consecutive games for Sanguin with three hits. That is no joke. Jerry Devanna leading off the sixth with a pop-up. Foul ground. It is caught. Wow, for a minute there. He's not that confident. One down. Here's Jose Cruz. 
ground ball to first. And Tommy Ag. Oh, he'll walk. You know we're going to send. Now, look, if there wasn't a stolen base title on the line here, you wouldn't run up six runs in the sixth inning. All right. But I'm going to assume they know what's up. And it's a 69% chance. And one of the best defensive catchers in the game. So the odds are not in our favor. But we're going to give it a shot. Here we go. First pitch. He's going. High pitch. And he's out. Damn it. Great job, Ron Lock. You come out of the ball game. Now, we will go with Fred Gladding here. In his last appearance, he did not puke himself. In fact, he's had two good uh, relief appearances in a row. We've been using him very sparingly, and that seems to be a wise decision. Let's see how it today. Vern Fuller pinch hitting. Rounding out to Kelly. I thought that was going to get through for a moment. One out. Teddy Ford striking out. Who is this? Fred Gladding. And a ground ball to first from Cardinal. A 1 2 3 inning. We go to the top of the seventh, and Phil Hennigan coming into the ball game. You see him in his 1971 card. He's bad. Uh, wow. 32 runs in 40 and two-third innings. That's not going to help out your team much. 93 mile an hour fastball is pretty good. It's rated only an 82. Overall rated a 78. The 24-year-old righty is arbitration eligible after the 72 season. And he's going to have to face Darren Johnson, who you know is going to be swinging for the fence. Oh, a base hit to him. He goes with the pitch. And that's Darren Johnson's third hit. Batting 274 now. Runner on first. Manny Sankian, three for three. 2-2 two -two count. Oh, it pops it up. Right on the third base chalk. Finally, somebody dispenses with Sankian. The only batter... Without a hit, Steve Whitaker hits a ground ball to third. That could be two. It is. Oh, he beats it out. Whitaker hustling, trying to stay on the team. And a really old comebacker. That's the first comebacker to a pitcher, do they? That will do it. Okay, we're going to let Gladding... Pitch to Parker, and then we'll bring in one of the many lefties in our bullpen. Yeah, I never like to bring out the pitcher for the next inning. It just never works out. And there's proof. My name is Earl. Earl Stevenson. He's going to come into the ball game. He's been shaky in his rookie season. And he's going to face Norm Cash. Cash walks. That's something he does a lot. And then he walks low in steam. God dang it. That was useless. Now we got to go to Bucky. The buck stops here. And he has been good in three consecutive performances. So, ZRA down to 750. Here's Ed Specio. He's already gone deep. High fly ball to right. Whitaker. Wow, back to the wall. And Cash will not tag. Down, si uh, down five. I guess that's probably the right thing to do. Here is Ken Suarez. over for two today. Popping it up. I was just going to say, AG getting caught stealing. I, I was... In the moment, I felt a little concerned by the uh, home run and then the two walks. But with the pitcher up next, we might just get out of this. Nope, I lied. We're going to bring in a switch hitter, Richie Scheinbloom. He has not played that much this year. Only 100 at-bats. A grand slam would be bad. One, two count. Ground ball to third, Rodriguez. 
Easy play. All right, good job. We go to the top of the eighth inning. We're still up five. Bob Allen coming in. What about Bob? Making his ninth appearance. No record. 216 ERA. Well, he's actually been pretty good for a guy that wasn't in baseball. Uh, fastball topping out at 88 miles an hour. Sidearm curve. Still league average. Overall a 72. The 32-year-old left-hander is a free agent at the end of the year. And Van Kelly. We'll keep Kelly in there. There's no point in pinch hitting um, Sutherland or whatever. There's a ground ball to third. Brandon will come out. And we will let Sutherland pitch it here. Batting 326 versus lefties. Oh, a line drive to not catch. Two down and Jerry Devenen. A base hit to right. That's 13 hits for the Pilots. Devenen on first. Here's Jose Cruz. Base hit to center. Maybe two. Nope. Um, no. We, we're not going to risk it. We could. It wouldn't make a difference. But with three home runs between the next two guys, I mean, these guys are hot. Hot, hot, hot. Fly ball from AG. Eh. Okay, that'll end it. Darren Johnson will get one more shot to hit his third home run today, though. Okay, we're going to bring in a right-handed pitcher named Ray Peters. Ray Ray, his rookie year has not been good. But his right arm works, and that's why he was in there. Five-run lead. He'll definitely pitch to these three guys. Striking out Ted Ford. One up. Jose Cardinal. A tapper back to the mound. Two outs. Billy Parker popping it up. Catchable. Right. Here we go. Top of the ninth inning. Five run lead. Darren Johnson. Looking for a triple dong day. One two count. Oh, nuts. Can we get a four hit day for Manny? Oh, come on. They're not even trying. This guy wasn't even in baseball. Let's go. Whitaker. He goes 0 for 5 today. Bottom of the ninth inning. We're going to bring in Ramon Hernandez. Not a safe situation, so Riddleberger will not get a shot, but Ramon gets lefties and righties out both fairly well. 0-1 count to Norm. Base hit. Only the fifth hit today. Great. So he walks the first two batters. Or I mean a hit and a walk to both the lefties. Spezio's out. How many runs will they get this inning? That's the question. Suarez, tap it back to the pitcher. Oh, I thought that was going to be two to end it. Wishful thinking. Now, the game is going to make Versales get on no matter what. Will it be a walk? No. So there's the junk run. And John Orsino. Is he a catcher? Yeah, he's a steady backup catcher. One more run, and it will no longer. Oh, oh, there we go. It doesn't matter. I was going to say it'll be a save opportunity. That should do it. And the Pilots win 8-4. to four, Handshakes, Buck Slaps, on the sticks. That was a nice victory. I didn't feel stressed out at all. Let's take a look at the standings. Okay. Uh, well, the White Sox won as well. We really need to tank one or two here. Maybe game two of the doubleheader will happen that way. 
Um, Montreal's not cooperating. And in fact, Chicago could be a problem as well. I mean, it's basically a two-horse race in the uh, West. Four and a half games back. Um, yeah, and the Mets have just completely lost it. Five in a row, they're three back. And Philadelphia, out of nowhere, might win the division. That's kind of a shocker. We don't see that happen very often in uh, Baseball Mogul, where someone does actually uh, poop the mound, you know. Headline news, Brainiac Baseball. Moorhead shuts down the Tigers. He's the guy that almost threw a no-hitter, right? He had went eight and two-third innings against us without giving up a hit. Um, how many hits did he give up in this one? Look at the box score. I'm curious. This guy might be the best pitcher in the league on one of the worst teams. Popping up here. I guess we could have looked at his card and then his log. Two hitter! Oh my gosh! Dave Moorhead, who'd have thunk it? All right. A's expand their lead in the West. And Darren Johnson hits two home runs. He's probably the player of the game. Transactions. Nothing new. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. There's the... Please stay tuned. I think by this weekend, we'll start taking participants for that. And you must be a subscriber. And the second place prize is a, is a boog. If you already got a boog, you get one here, perhaps. Uh, it's his autograph. That's the second place prize. First place prize to be determined. Whoops. Here we go. Player of the game. We're going to give it to Darren Johnson. Three hits. Four RBI, two home runs. Tommy Agee hit a home run as well. He is caught stealing. Uh, Ron Locke pitched really well. Um, Indians had six hits. Three of them were home runs. Two by Billy Parker. One by Spezio, his first of the year. Bullpen did not really help out much. But uh, they had to give up a couple runs. That's just the way it is. Sonny Siebert takes a loss. He's 11 and 16 on the year. Okay, we, as of right now, we'll come back later on, later and late, late, later, and play uh, game two of the doubleheader. Uh, so stick around or you'll have a ball game in the morning anyway. Until then, everyone, have a great day.